South people, you don't have to explain yourself to anyone. How hard is it for a Western Australian filmmaker to put together a feature compared to if you were working, say, in New South Wales or Victoria? Um, that's an interesting question um, because I'm originally from Sydney and had, uh, you know, had worked in Sydney as a producer before I moved to Perth. Um, look, there's a lot more competition and a lot less money in uh, in the eastern states. So in a way, it's sort of easier in WA because there is less competition on the funds and there's quite a lot of money um, because of the Lottery West commitment with Screen West. So um, in a way, I found it easier. Um, also, the fact that the state's quite wealthy, um, it has high net sort of worth individuals. Um, mm. it, for it, private it, investment. Yeah, for private investment. It, it, I have to say, it wasn't that difficult for us. Um, maybe things have changed now. I mean, this is a couple of years ago, um, but it was just before um, the GFC. But you know, it sort of Perth remained untouched in a way. So. Do you think the younger demographic is uncatered for in Australia in terms of films? We had films like um, uh, Pump Up the Volume and things like that, like when we were young, and we felt like there weren't really a lot of films, sort of you know, zeitgeist films for young people at the moment, uh, well, these days. And um, we're hoping that this is one for them, you know, about them. And, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think recently that there are some come out, like there's Tomorrow When the War Began. But, you know, when we went into production on this, there wasn't really anything around that was catering to them directly. And hopefully, um, hopefully this speaks to them. How important is the online element for marketing of this film? Very, because that's where our audience is. Because, in, in all honesty, I find it a bit ironic that the film that deals with the whole uh, social media text message world mm. yesterday on Facebook, it only had 1,400 followers and the film gets released next week. So do you think that there's been an effort in terms of online promotion of this film? Or? Um, I'd like to see it ramp up more this week. Hopefully it will now that, I mean, this is our press week, so it will be out in the media. Uh, the push is really this week, so hopefully the numbers will increase. So ask me again at the end of the week. <laughs> now, and you were very fortunate to be working with Paramount because mm -hmm. Paramount has distributed a number of Australian films in conjunction with Transmission. But this mm -hmm. is one of the first projects that they distribute directly, such as, they, uh, such as uh, Tomorrow When the War Began, that was one of the... Uh, solely this uh, sole project. Mm. So, how was it working with Paramount? We we knew that we were making um, an art house crossover film. Whether you go art house crossing over to commercial or a little bit commercial crossing over to art house, it sort of sits in this middle ground. And we knew we needed a distributor that um, could put enough money behind it should it should it go big. And so. Uh, Given uh, the response to the film so far, we think that the strategy that's in place for the release um, is about the right size for this film, and I'm not sure we could have done that with a with a smaller distributor. So we're really happy um, that we secure Paramount. They're always at the top of our list. I remember meeting Mike Selwyn a couple of years ago at a spa when we were uh, in pre-production on the film, and I said, Mike, I've got this film for you. And he said, well, he didn't know me from a bar of soap at that time, and he said, well, talk to me when it's done. And uh, when we showed them when it was completed, he was... Uh, quite pleased with what he saw, so quite happy that we, we got the distributor that was on the top of our list. But it is a risk to complete the film without having a distributor. The, it increases the chances that once the distributor sees the film, they might be able to do something bigger with it. We had a smaller one on on board. We had to for contracting all the way through. Um, we had uh, at one stage we were had Mushroom on board, but as you know, Mushroom sort of fell over halfway through um, our production. So um, the, the the risk wasn't there in a sense, um, but also in a way because we were first time filmmakers and a lot of the actors, you know, it was their first feature film. Um, we were an unproven package for anyone basically. So it was a really hard sell to to sort of secure secure um, an international sales agent or a distributor based on no track record. Um, and so we knew that the best way to do it would be to shoot it, get it in the can, and then we can prove that, look, well, here's the quality. We're taking the risk out of it for you now by showing you what we have been able to do. How mm -hmm. do you think this film is different from the general output of the Australian film industry? I think the point of difference is in the way we approach the film, the film and um, how we put it together. I think for us the key is to strike the right balance between ambition and uh, achievability. Uh, we aimed really high and tried to make something look quite slick. Th you know, like I said, through all the money at the screen basically because we're competing in an international market. This film's going to sit next to, you know, American blockbusters in the cinema. So um, our audience is savvy. They can see that difference. But also 
know our t- know that we have an audience and know that we're able to reach it. So we're not sure if we've done that yet. We'll have to wait and see who goes and sees a film. But I think uh, being smart about your budget level, knowing what you can achieve for that, and also knowing where your audience is and how to reach them.